metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. that parents tell their children. They have fantasy plots and try to teach a lesson. You want to hear a fairy tale? Uh, sorry, I don't really know how to tell any. Fine, come back here. I shouldn't have programmed you to be so cute. Okay, the story starts somewhere. Once upon a time, there was a wonderful, uh, arctic with a handsome, uh, penguin scientist. Wrong! You're already doing it wrong! Start with a princess. But how did I start wrong? Don't you know fairy tales? They need a princess and they all have a love story. And you should change the place. It's, uh, cold up there. <laughs> Is that so? Well, fine, I guess. It begins in the uh, warm climate of Somewheresville, and there's a beautiful princess, because apparently that's how they start. And one day she ran into a, um, a musician. Yeah, he played the lute. It was love at first sight. Ahem, I said it was love at first sight. Hmm? <laughs> he decided to write the most beautiful song to impress Her Royal Highness. So he did. He played the best song, and she was very impressed. And then they got married, and they all lived happily ever after. They also got tax exemptions, which he needed as a musician. That's it? All he did was play a song? And he got the princess? <laughs> uh, maybe it was a magic song. The problem with your story is that there's no conflict. Nothing. Don't you see? Listen up. He can't get the princess just like that. He has to earn it. Make him work for it. <sighs> All right, fine. Now there is a bad guy who is no fun. <sighs> <laughs> Huh? You're a hoot if you think that you can have her hand. Uh, that sounds right. E <gasps> now you're stuck. You have to earn it. <laughs> I'm progressing the story with some conflict. <laughs> hey, princess. <clears throat> <laughs> so what happened next? I don't know. The tower's too tall, and maybe he left. They need a way to talk. There has to be some way to communicate. But how, though? Our heroes should use the classic telephone. 
telephones take the sound waves we make with our voice and change them into electrical impulses. These originally traveled by copper wire. The electrical signals would travel to the recipient and be converted back into sound waves. As long as those copper wires reach us, we can talk to someone halfway across the globe or a fairy tale kingdom. It'd be no problem to get telephone wires up the tower. Uh, hold on a second. So my fairy tale world has technology now? <laughs> Just a thought. Seems your characters are in a quandary. It's your story after all. You can tell it as you like. Okay, fine. They have a telephone. The poor musician was at a loss. Then he had an idea. He had a friend who could help him out. The clever know-it-all wizard. The wizard said to him, You're in luck, my friend, because in this fairy tale world I have endless funding. Yesterday I invented something phenomenal. It's called a telephone. When the wizard was done patting himself on the back, our hero took the new machine out of the tower, determined to make the storyline work. I mean, woo the princess. Hmm? The princess could finally hear the song and was impressed by the technology. They were happy forever and all was well. Hang on. That can't be everything. Oh, you're right. I forgot about the story's bad guy. Sounds to me the telephone's an easy way out. The witch wouldn't take kindly to this. <laughs> and she'd fight them. She'd cast a storm of magic. That'd do it. Not an actual storm. That would mess things up bad. Whatever. You think the princess is afraid of some lightning? I think she's a little better than that. Yeah, the musician is brave. In the story. Ah, uh, no doubt our heroes are brave. But it's the telephones we should be worried about. Remember, the electrical signals travel by copper wire. They have a magnetic field around them that help the pulses move. The problem with a physical copper wire is that someone can easily tap into that connection. Hey, you! Stop listening! Other problems can arise, too. The wires can be sensitive to radio waves. And lightning, too. Since it's electricity, just like the pulses in the wires. With old phones, sometimes even electric engines can interfere. With these old-school phone wires, a lot of things can make them go... Haywire! Get it? <laughs> Never mind. Because of that, a thunderstorm would really mess things up for our story's heroes. Good! That's what she should do. A minor hurricane should do it. <laughs> you think you're clever, huh? Ah! Lightning! The princess can never hear his music, and they never find each other? Beats me! Mm hmm. That's brilliant! They can use the power of fiber optics instead of wires! Good job! What's fiber optics? Like oatmeal? Good solution! If you have a light source, you can spread the light by moving it to a body of water. The water will reflect within the water's edges, meaning the light will travel wherever the water travels. <gasps> that must be how the lighted fountains work at fancy hotels. They're so pretty. How surprisingly perceptive of you, Rosa. That's exactly right. 
By this same principle, light can move with the help of wires. These wires are glass instead of copper. They're also called optical waveguides. Here's how they work. Light enters the outer shell of the glass wire and bounces along the waveguide. The light particles travel wherever the wire goes. Aren't fiber optics interesting? And luckily for our fairy tale heroes, fiber optics can also be used to transmit sound waves. In the very same way, sound travels through the wires and can be converted to different types of media. You can even convert the sound waves into light waves. Isn't technology phenomenal? The sound waves can go through all kinds of different formats. Eventually, they get converted back into sound waves that our princess can hear. And here's something even better about fiber optics. It's a lot safer. There's less of a chance someone can listen in to your conversation. As another bonus, they aren't affected by external sounds, lightning, or engines. It's just what they need. Assuming they don't have copper, this could work better. To make fiber optics, all they need is quartz. And that is found in sand. <laughs> the characters have lots of that. They're in a desert. You're so right. The smart aleck wizard invented a new phone that used fiber optic cables instead of normal ones. He tossed the receiver up to the tower and played his beautiful song. This time, the sound was undeterred by lightning. The princess was impressed with the music. Not exactly Mozart, but her options were limited. And the annoying villain was finally out of options. <gasps> Does that end the story? Were they happy? I'd say so. This time the hero earned it. Don't forget, they also earned phenomenal phone service. <laughs> <laughs> No, BB. They just made up. That's why they're called fairy tales. Just remember that none of that actually happened. Oh, well, maybe that story happened in a different universe. Using glass wires instead of copper ones is a huge breakthrough in phone communication. Fiber optics have made technology soar in the past few years. Fiber optics also contributed to the internet, making the whole world connected. And we have this guy to thank for it, Charles Cao, an electrical engineer from Hong Kong who won the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics for discovering fiber optics.